Latch the windows, lock the doors, and put the kids to bed. It's time for another episode of Tales from the Garage. Well, 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 I'm back. Big surprise, huh? I think I gave you guys a bit of a reprieve. I think I gave you maybe 24 hours of not dealing with me. And uh, oddly enough, it feels like I haven't done one of these in, in a while now. You know, it's, it's funny because going back a couple months ago, I didn't do a video for, I think, like three months or something like that. And I had a force, going back to the winter time, like uh, February, March time frame. And man, I just couldn't get back in gear off of doing it again, you know, and and I kind of forced myself for that first video. And once I did it like one, I was kind of in the mode again and, you know, then started doing them every every week or so. And then just just picked up recently. I, I don't know. Uh, blame boredom. Um, blame lack of employment. That's a, that's a big one. When I get to working again, um, who knows how often I'll get to I'll get to do these. Um, but one thing at a time. I've been lazy, and, I, and lately I haven't really talked much about what I've been listening to. Um, I'm still mostly in a summertime acoustic mood, uh, but some of the albums that I've played um, have gotten the electric uh, thing back in there. They're, they're not exclusively electric, they're not exclusively acoustic, there's some electric instruments mixed in there. But in general, I'm still kind of in that summertime mode of uh, listening to a lot of acoustic-based music. Um, classical music probably gets played a bit more in the summertime for me. Uh, ethnic music, like uh, the, the Chinese and the Japanese music, which is all acoustic, the stuff I have anyway. Um, that gets played much more in the summertime. The uh, music from Ancient Greece album, that's one of my favorite albums. Um, that gets played always in the summer because the, the first time I heard that one was in the, in the summertime uh, on a classical station many, many decades ago, uh, early 1980s, uh, like 3 o'clock in the morning kind of thing. And ever since then, uh, it took me years to actually pick up uh, an album of the, the Ancient Greek music. Uh, but once once I did, I, I never forgot that association with having heard it in the middle of the night that one summer, and as a result, it also has the summertime mood, which it, in my mind, which it probably would anyway, um, because I have this association that already exists uh, with the summertime and the warm weather with acoustic music, and obviously the music of ancient Greece is all acoustic music played on their various very funky kind of stringed instruments and odd flutes and, and percussion uh, interesting stuff but I'm lazy so I'm not really showing you so much of what I've been listening to lately and I'm just gonna do some more random vinyl polls well it's a twofer it's not an ECM it's actually a prestige record one of the many 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 twofers that I bought in the late 70s and early 80s, this one is a Miles Davis uh, twofer. They repackaged all of his, uh, this is on Prestige. Uh, his first label that he recorded for on a regular basis uh, was Prestige Records in the 50s. And this was also uh, the label that had his first working band with uh, John Coltrane on sax and, and Red Garland on piano. Um, and Philly Joe Jones on, on drums, and Paul Chambers on bass. And looking at this, I've got so many of these, I forget what albums these actually encapsulate. So this is a, a two disc set. And this is one of the things that I, I, I think of as a, uh, as a, like a Saturday buy. It's like you go to the record store on, or, uh, at some point on a Saturday, and you really, you know, at the time wanted to come back with something to enjoy. So you have a nice two record set. So you got about, you know, an hour and 20 minutes or so of music, which is a, a good amount to sink your teeth into. Obviously, 
much better than like a 40 minute album and also better that that you know it's it, it's a, a repackaging of old stuff because as a result you get these liner notes to read now the print is a little bit bigger on this one than on many of the two furs I have which means that there's less biographical information on there uh, sometimes the print was so small you could spend an hour reading it if you didn't read through it fast this is quite a lot bigger so there's less information but it's still um, notes by Ralph Gleason and if you're a fan at all of, of, of uh, mainstream jazz music from the 50s, 60s, or 70s, you definitely know uh, Ralph Gleason's name as a jazz writer. And uh, so, you know, it's got the, the historical information about what was going on. This uh, is a repackaging of uh, two albums, two complete albums, not a, like a compilation thing. Um, two out of the four four albums that this working quintet made for prestige. Uh, these two were Cooking with the Miles Davis court Quintet and Relaxing with the Miles Davis Quintet. So those two albums are represented here and uh, all the tracks were recorded in uh, two different sessions in 1956. Wow, that's even before I was around. Uh, so January, May uh, 56 and October of 56. Good stuff, great stuff. Um, I highly recommend that. I've, I, I have got this music in so many, this is um, the first permeation of these albums, the classic uh, original Miles Davis quintet with uh, Red Garland and um, John Coltrane. This is my first purchase of them on vinyl. Later on, I got, um, oh, I, I want to say I have, I might have had the original Jazz Classics uh, reissues of these when they put them out with the original album covers, the very, you know, very 50s-ish style album covers. I, I may have, so I may have these on vinyl. I can tell you I have these in a boxed set prestige in the early CD era in the late 1980s prestige records put out a box uh, CD box set I want to say I'm gonna show it in one of these videos but I want to say it's five CDs six CDs I forget of all of Miles Davis uh, work for the prestige label and you know came in an LP size box uh, booklet and all the CDs, and I bought and I bought that, thinking, well, now I've got all of Miles' work on Prestige. I don't really need to buy it again, but I, I'm such a sucker. I ended up buying Japanese, no less expensive Japanese um, re-releases of I think all four of the uh, Miles Davis quintet albums recorded for Prestige being the ones with Coltrane and Red Garland and Paul Chambers and Philly Joe Jones. And why would I buy the, the, the individual Japanese CDs of these four albums that I already have in vinyl format and I already had on, already have on the big Prestige box set? And only VC people would understand this. Um, but I don't even, I never did a side-by-side -side comparison really to see if there's a better sound quality. That's kind of iffy because the, the you know, these sessions are from the 1950s. So the, the quality is very good for the 1950s, but I don't know if upgrading from one CD version to another CD version, you're going to get much of a bump up in sound quality. Um, the sound is as good as it, it, it can be already, probably on the earlier CD releases. However, I bought a later Japanese CD releases of some of these. This is this is really timeless music. I, you know, if you hear it now, it sounds kind of conservative. It's all acoustic, you know, acoustic bass and piano and drums and sax and trumpet. Um, but this was a very popular band at the time, um, and it wasn't so. I don't know. It wasn't just quite so mainstream. Uh, it was it was still it was still fresh and new and bebop and um, one of the things that really helps the music is is how well it was recorded. I will say that it's the clarity 
to these, uh, again, these are Rudy Van Gelder sessions. Um, it doesn't say right offhand where these were. I'm sure these were recorded in uh, here in New Jersey at Rudy Van Gelder's studio. <coughs> since he, he was the recording engineer, so I, I can't imagine it would have been done anywhere else. Uh, even though on this particular package, they don't mention the physical location of the studio. Um, I bought the Japanese CD versions because oddly enough, they had something that the big prestige CD box set did not have. And that, and, it, and like I said, it's something only VC people can understand, I think. And that is they had a couple of, they had some studio chatter in between the tracks. And they had one or two false starts where the band, because this was all done all live in the studio. It wasn't recorded piecemeal like today's stuff is. You know, bass, bass and drums one day and piano the next day kind of thing. Um, and the Japanese releases of these quintet albums had a little bit of studio chatter and a couple false starts where the band would start playing and it was the wrong tempo or, or something. St somebody started off on the wrong foot. Oh, I don't know if you can hear dogs barking in the background. See, it's only early evening now, not late evening, so people are out. Uh, the weather is not as hot, so uh, people are uh, maybe hanging outside a little bit more. And they're, they're always walking their dogs around here anyway. Um, but I ended up laying money out for these Japanese CD releases simply because of the studio chatter. One or two full starts where the band starts playing a tune for 16 or 17 seconds, and then they stop, and, and then they, you know, something wasn't working, and they go and they do another take of it um, and I just had to have that so I'm, I'm a nut when it comes to this stuff so how many different versions of this do I have at least at very least three I want to say probably and that's not even counting the other vinyl copies that I'm not sure that I have or not um, I think I do have another vinyl version of these great quintet Miles Davis quintet um, yeah, I actually like the earlier quintet. Yes, it was more mainstream and bebop. I prefer it to the later one with Herbie Hancock and Wayne Shorter, though both those guys are geniuses. Um, I just prefer the, the first one, the, the prestige stuff. To me, you can't go wrong with Miles on prestige. Any other label that he recorded for, you have to kind of uh, look out. There's some stuff that maybe isn't so great in there. Okay, here we go. I'm back again. I'm picking up more vinyl. Oh, my God. But it did dawn on me that I don't really buy vinyl anymore. So, you know, doing these random picks, you're only going to really see my old collection stuff and, and really not things after like 1986. I bought very little vinyl after 1986. So, eventually, at some point, I, I have to figure out how to integrate my overall collection, my CD collection, with these random picks and that's a lot harder because I have so many CDs and some of them are arranged by group so I would know in advance if I'm going to an Oregon uh, the band Oregon for instance and I have all of their solo albums of all the members all together I would know that I was picking on Oregon or a solo project from one of the members um, and then I've got others where I've just got big plastic storage bins just full of CDs. I guess I could bring one out here and just kind of reach down in there. Uh, so I have to find a way to really integrate my, my post-1985 um, collection in. Oh wow, here, I didn't even know this was back there. Here's one that I've been putting off buying on CD for ages and I don't know why because I love this album. And guess what, it's not a, wow. Two records in, we haven't picked out a Klaus Schultz or an ECM record yet. Chester and Lester. Man, do I love this. This is for this is for guitar fans. Um, Les Paul and Chet Atkins. Now, Chet Atkins is known more as a country guitarist, and so I didn't really pay much attention to him until I bought this album. They did two albums together. This one, when was this done? I want to say it was the 1970s. Um, with all the liner notes here, guess what they didn't put on? The recording date. Well, the record came out in 76, so obviously it had to have been recorded before that. Um, I'm a little surprised they didn't include the recording date on here. It may be in the liner notes. Nice, 
nice back cover. Since it's not a gay fold, it doesn't open up. I really do appreciate the fact that they uh, included the liner notes to the extent they did. Like I was saying, I, I wasn't uh, a huge Chet Atkins fan. I was aware of who he was, but um, I was kind of put him in the country guitar category more. Uh, definitely a brilliant finger picker. But um, I've seen very little of him. I've seen him a bit on television, so I knew who he was. Uh, this was recommended to me by somebody I used to work with, a guy that was about, I don't know, maybe five years older than me, maybe a bit more. Um, he said, you got to hear this. And it's really just, they're supported by um, a regular backup band, a drums, bass, piano, and even, I find strange, um, rhythm guitar. You already got two guitarists. But um, so I guess this was essentially done live in the studio. Um, so it's not guitar duets per se. But hearing this album, I already knew Les Paul uh, from his jazzy playing, which I love. Uh, but um, also, Ch Chet Atkins plays in a very jazzy mode. And in a way, I'm not used to hearing him play. And of course, a lot of his own albums had singing in it as well. So that kind of takes away from the guitar playing aspect, obviously. And this is just a fun, if you like... I mean, obviously, it's not it's not a Van Halen record. They don't have any fuzz boxes on here, thankfully. Um, they do they do uh, Caravan, the jazz piece, um, Birth of the Blues, Lover Come Back to Me. So if, if you saw the the theme from um, the movie Picnic called Moon Glow, which was a uh, for a while a fairly popular thing for jazz people to play, um, and so you've got two. Electric guitar is playing a very clean, uh, very fun, easy to listen to. I have to, I have to get this on CD. Now it's funny because this keeps happening. These albums that I pull out um, that are things that I haven't played for years. Uh, you know, I swear it was only last week that I said to myself, I have to get this album on CD, and I actually uh, was looking to see if it was in print. So it's, and I didn't even know the, I hadn't seen the vinyl for years. I didn't even know the vinyl was back there. I don't know what made me think of this album. They did one other album as well. And I know the CD has gone in and out of print. So I have, I do have to look into that. I don't know what I, I saw. Maybe it was something on Chet Atkins or maybe it was something on Les Paul that made me think about this album again. And just last week I was looking for it. So it's kind of weird that I would pull this out of this collection back there, not even knowing that it was in there. Uh, I really miss not hearing this. And of course, with my fucked up turntable, uh, you know, I wouldn't even attempt to play it. Um, but man, I just, you know, now pulling it out again, and I'm going to, as soon as I'm done filming, I'm going to be uh, reading the liner notes and, and probably wanting to hear it even more. Um, yeah, I just really want to hear this again. Uh, just, just an easy, you know, easy light, like light jazz album, maybe call it. It's, it's all instrumental. I don't recall there being any real like countryish stuff, uh, which would be the Chet Atkins aspect of it. I remember being pretty much like a, like a couple jazz dudes hanging out playing, you know, tunes. But they don't really stretch out very much. There's, a, there's one six-minute track on here. Most of the tracks are, are three minutes and change. Um, so, yeah, so, look, if you go online like Amazon or something and you find that there's only one copy available, please don't buy it until I get my CD version, okay? <laughs> I gotta get that. I gotta get that. Um, wow. Would it be possible for me to go back in there and not pull out an ECM? We'll see. I'm gonna choose that one because just because it's all right. Ugh. 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 Well, guess what? No. Wow. I really like this album. I bought this um, when it came out. It, it's an ECM album. What a surprise! Bought this at Disco Mat. Just so you know, I paid six ninety nine. The list price was nine ninety eight. Uh, and, they're, and it's Dave Holland's Life Cycle, and they're touting that it's a digital recording. So you know, this is the early 80s. This is just before the CD era started. This was recorded in November 1982. 
So it came out in probably about mid-1983, just before the CD era. I bought it uh, right away when it came out. I was at the record shop probably at once a week. If I didn't go once a week, something was wrong. I, like I'd be in the hospital or, or mental ward or something. So I bought this when it first came out because I was already well aware of ECM by the early 80s and who Dave Holland was. And it was plus plus when I saw it, it was a, it was unusual. Dave did a few a couple solo bass albums, which to me are always interesting because that's a that's a challenge to try to make a solo bass album and keep it interesting. So I, I always gravitated toward those and was always more curious about hearing those than I would be a standard band. Um, and this one is one of a kind because it's solo Dave Holland. But there's no bass, he plays cello. This is all cello, called Life Cycle. Just cello. And as such, it's a little bit um, easier to listen to than, say, a solo bass recording, because cellos are, uh, by their nature, a, a bit more of a solo instrument, I guess you could say, than, than, than an upright bass is. Uh, but I remember really, really liking this album. I'm sure I have this on CD because I like it so much. Um, and when yeah, I went to do the conversion over to CD, when it comes to Dave Holland's music, the things I really wanted to make sure I got were the solo albums, the solo bass albums, and, and this one, the, his only solo cello album. Now, by the way, I can just I can remember something at this particular time in the in the early '80s. I can remember the internet wasn't around. I remember reading, and it had to have been in a uh, in a jazz magazine or music magazine, that Dave Holland had had a heart attack sometime around this time frame, and the way it was written about um, sounded very serious. It sounded like he was out of commission for quite a while, and the way that it was written, without much more information other than he had a, a pretty serious heart attack. Um, and I guess he had to cancel shows or something like that. Made it sound, I don't want to say more serious than it was, but, but it kind of sounded like, ooh, that's not good. I wonder if he's on his last legs. So here it is, early 80s, and now we're in 2018, and Dave's still around, thankfully. I, I'm, I'm so thrilled. And, but every time I, I see a new album come out or I read about a a concert that Dave's playing with somebody or his band or whatever. It always brings me back to those days in the early 80s when I heard about his heart attack. And I would have never guessed that all these years later he would still be around after hearing about the severity of that heart attack. And then eventually I heard nothing else, but then I started seeing other albums coming out. Because remember, there's no internet. Um, and no way to get this, to find this information out. So eventually, and it took probably a year or two or more after I heard that news to see something else of Dave Holland's coming out and of course I wasn't too sure of the time frame of his heart attack so even when that stuff came out I'm like well gee this might have been recorded before he had the heart attack because I didn't know the exact date and the exact year so it took really another couple of years of new releases still coming out that I was sure okay these had to have been done after his heart attack and then you know, for him to resume touring again and everything was 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 grand, great news. Uh, and here we are, 2018, and he's still he's still out he's still out there, which is just wonderful. And he's such a nice guy. If you ever see an interview with him, um, talented guy as well. I love these pictures. I don't know where these pictures were taken. I I always thought like probably Central Park or something, but who knows? This could be Norway for all I know. Of Dave with his cello in in, in a park in either like winter time or autumn the great great photos great black and white photos really enhanced the album so without liner notes because ECM never really did liner notes they always had this that was nice to to, to look at uh gives you a vibe of the music and once again now like it's like everything i pulled out here now i want to hear and i can hear the miles stuff i'm real sure i have this on 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 cd and i gotta pull that out but I don't have the Chester and Lester yet, and I do I do want to hear this again. This is a while, like I was saying, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful car riding music because it's light, it's easy to get into, 
I could even play it around my my dad who's in his 90s, and you know, it, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be something like he'd be like, "What oh, the hell is that kind of thing?" You know, <laughs> he'd actually like it, I'm sure. So I'm gonna leave it off here now with again with three albums. Uh, I I thought one of these days, you know, I'm gonna be able to do one of these picks and not pull out an ECM album, but I guess that's not gonna happen yet. So. Um, Thanks for those who watch these. Um, I'm sorry with the frequency of which I'm doing. I'm doing these, and and it's nearly impossible for people to keep up. But uh, hey, so you know, if you watch it a week or a month later, it's out there. And you know, and who knows? There there might be a time when I just uh, am too busy or just too damn lazy to, to to make them again for a while. So. I'm putting them out now for the universe to absorb. Okay, guys, I'll be back. Who knows? I might end up filming another one of these today even and um, keeping it for the archives for a day or two. Who knows? But I'll be back. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I hope um, I hope the summer is not too intense where you are. seems most of my regulars... Uh, live in areas where the heat's worse than it is here, so you definitely have my sympathy because I cannot stand the summer. Okay, guys, peace. I'll be back. Take care. Tune in next time for more Tales from the Garage.